Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's live webinar presented by SCORE Fairfield County in partnership with the Darien Library on Basic Excel One. This is the second webinar in a five-part technology tune-up series to help bring you up to speed on the tools you need to succeed both in and outside your office. I'm Mike Clem, a business mentor at SCORE Fairfield County, and I am one of your co-hosts tonight. Susan Skerritt, a film librarian at the Darien Library, is also co-hosting tonight's webinar. Our presenter tonight is Budley Freund. More on Budley in just a minute. But first, let me provide you some brief information about SCORE. SCORE is a nationwide organization, including over 11,000 volunteers with more than 300 offices around the country, providing free advice to small business owners. SCORE Fairfield County is comprised of more than 130 volunteers with a wide range of industry, process, and subject matter expertise. We offer three services to small business owners shown here on the screen, all of which are free. Please go to our website at fairfieldcounty.score.org to learn more and to sign up for free one-on-one -on -one business counseling. Now, let me provide some useful information about tonight's webinar. If you have a question during the presentation, please use the chat window at any time. It's located in the lower part of your screen. Susan and I will be monitoring your questions. and We have set aside time for Q&A at the end of the presentation. Our webinar will end sharply at 7 p.m. to respect your time. The session is being recorded and the link to the recording will be available at fairfieldcounty.score.org and DarianLibrary.org within the next couple of days. It's now my pleasure to introduce our speaker for tonight's webinar. Buddy Froren has been self-employed for 40 years. After graduating from Ithaca College, his national and international assignments were from corporate magazine and public relations clients. He has been providing IT solutions to homes and small businesses for over 20 years. He currently teaches technology life skills at King and manages the Bicultural Hebrew Academy Network. As a certified SCORE mentor, he regularly presents technology webinars and workshops throughout Fairfield County. We'll now turn it over to Budley. It's all yours, Budley. Thank you very much, Mike. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Before we dive in too deeply, I wanted to do a quick disclaimer. Uh, the first time I did this Excel web uh, workshop was at the New Canaan Library in the middle of winter, sub-zero weather. There were 100 people in the room. And at the end of the workshop, somebody come, came up to me and said, do you realize that you just did Algebra 1, Trigonometry 1, and Geometry 1 in an hour? And I understood metaphorically what he was talking about. And I said to him, did you read the syllabus? And he looked at me like I had two heads and he said, no, I didn't. That might've been a good idea to do. So I had a workshop coming up in February along with somebody else. We were going to be talking about mail and snail mail, email and snail mail. So I put in this disclaimer planning to tell that story. And my co-presenter was about a third of the way into his presentation and somebody raised their hand and said, why are you talking about mail? And I've never seen an audience in unison do the what? I can't believe you said that. And fortunately, somebody in the audience beat me to the punch and said it was in the syllabus. Now, the person who asked the question was so mortified, they got up and left before the email portion of the presentation. Hopefully, you will not do that. But these are the items I'm going to be talking about. And having done this a few times before, I'm fairly confident that we will get through the list and we're not going to be covering macros and we're not going to be covering pivot tables. One more item before we dive in too deeply and understand we're going to try to do this as easily and as in plain, simple English as we can. But understand that we are all using computers now to get our work done. And if they stopped working, please understand you've got to get these four things to do 
whether you've got a computer or not. So if you take nothing else away from this presentation, figure out how you would do these four things and understand that in doing so, you will have a leg up on a multinational corporation that had absolutely no idea of what to do when they were attacked a number of years ago. Now, as you know, spreadsheets are a great place to hold data. And as time has gone on, there are a number of rules and liabilities that you may want to keep in mind as you start to gather data on people who you work with. Specifically, that list up there of how do you use it? Where do you store it? Please be sure you're backing it up. Please be sure you're safeguarding it. Passwords are very important. And in many cases now, there are laws that require you to destroy the data when you are done doing business with people. Federally, Sarbanes-Oxley, Graham-Leach-Bliley, and HIPAA are all laws for specific fields that address how you need to manage data. In New York, last year, they passed a, a law called Stop Hacks and Improve Elec Electronic Data Security, the SHIELD law. And if you are doing business with people in New York, you have to be able to explain to them what you are doing with their data. This information generically is referred to as personally identifiable information. And that list just below it are examples of what would be considered personally identifiable information that you need to safeguard for people you do business with. So please think about the information you need and think about where and how you keep it safely. So Kleenex is a generic, despite the fact that a single company makes it. You generically talk about a Xerox copy, although there's very clearly a company that makes Xerox machines. Office is also now a generic phrase for the data processing, uh, well, uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, presentation, spreadsheets, and writing letters. And there are multiple choices as to how you can go about doing that. And I've tried to list several of them. If you're on the Mac side, as part of the computer that you purchase, you get numbers, pages, and Keynote. If you invest in docs to go it is a uh, mobile app that takes up very little space on your mobile device. And then we get into Microsoft Office. And I am going to be doing this presentation in Office 365. I strongly recommend you consider Office 365 because while it is rental as opposed to ownership, Microsoft is constantly plugging up holes and fixing problems and trying to keep the software up to date and safe. Plus, they will give you online one terabyte of storage in OneDrive. Now, if you use Office 365 as part of your subscription, you can now get what's called Office as a mobile app. And Office will, in a single app, provide you with Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, which are editable if you are paying for a subscription. This is significant because each of those three apps takes up a substantial amount of storage space on your phone. Now, it's also important to note that if you get the free version of the mobile app, you're not going to be able to edit a document, but you would be able to read it. Finally, if you have purchased your software and you lose a copy, you can always get a new download from office.com slash backup. So a couple of very basic things in Excel. Understand that the columns go down in their letters, the rows go across in their numbers. Control Z is undo in the world in the world of Windows. And 
If you put an equal sign in front of stuff in Excel, you are starting to type a formula. It is a very important thing to keep in mind. Also, I am going to strongly recommend to you that you get a two button mouse because you will find that it is just a, a fabulous method of um, maneuvering through Excel spreadsheets. Also, when you're working in Excel, if you do not have an autosave set up in OneDrive, I strongly recommend that you save your file as you're going so that you keep your, your records intact because if you don't save and you have a problem, you'll lose your data and have to start over. Also, if you want multiple copies, you can save as, and you'll get a second copy. I use a dating system where what you're looking at would be July 31st, 2014, and then dash two, dash three, dash four, and that's how I can keep multiple copies. Now, a copy is another. So you can have two different versions of the same document. A backup is another elsewhere. In other words, if my computer were to blow up sick dead tomorrow, I would still have all of my files because they're backed up someplace other than on this computer. And OneDrive, part of Office 365, or actually now it's called Microsoft 365, will do auto saving. So, the idea today is to overcome spreadsheet intimidation. We're going to do this list, as I mentioned before, and using the alt tab method, we're now going to go into an Excel spreadsheet. And I've got my list of things that I want to cover, so I won't be at my list here. So we're going to cover all of these items. So we'll start with sorting data. Now, right now, as you can see, I've got my data sorted by university name as opposed to state. Now, if I wanted to sort my data by state, I would go into data, I go into sort. Very important here, I tell, my data has headers. A header is this first line up top here, which defines all the information underneath. Now, I'm currently sorting by American colleges and universities. However, as a pull down menu, I can now go to state. And now I'm sorting by state as opposed to sorting by name of college or university. Control Z undoes. Oh, I didn't wanna do it that way. I wanted to do something slightly different. So I'm going to go back into sort. I'm going to check that my data has headers. I want to do my primary sort by state, but I'm going to add a second level. And now I'm going to be sorting alphabetically. However, we know that this is already in alphabetical order. So just for fun, I'm going to change it from A to Z, Z to A. So I'm first going to get my state listings, and then I'm going to get reverse alphabetical order of the colleges. And there you go. Now, to format, one of the things I recommend if you are working in a spreadsheet that does have a header is that you might want to make sure that all of your titles are capitalized. And I have to move my little picture here so I can get to other information. So I'm going to go back to my home tab. If I click on just American college and university names, I can go up to bold. I can make that bold. I can go above that. I can change it to my favorite Ariel. 
I can make it 20 point, make it a little larger. And now it starts to run into some spacing problems. Oh, how are we going to fix that? Now I want you to watch this mouse. Right now it's a plus sign. And when you start to move it around, it just changed to a bar with double arrows. Left click, slide over, and now I can make my cell wider. These are cells. Columns, if you click on the letter, you highlight the whole column. If you click on the number, you highlight the row. Now, if I highlight the row, I can undo my bolds or I can make them all bold. And if I want to select all of my spreadsheet, I go to the box above the number one and to the left of the letter A. And now I have highlighted my entire spreadsheet. And now if I wanted to adjust my columns for the entire spreadsheet, I can go back to my bar. I can now get my double arrows, double left click, and everything moves into place. I'm going to hold off on mailing lists because you need to close your spreadsheet in order to do those. I promise to get back to it. I want to talk for a few moments about tab delimited text because that is the secret formula for moving data that is in text format. Let's make this a little larger. Tab delimited text moves things between programs. So right now I've got my cursor right next to the letter A of Alaska. And if I hit my backspace key, it's going to kick all the way over to the letter Y because I have it tabbed. I hit the tab again, and now everything is out of whack. Hit the backspace key, now everything is in place. Control A, I've selected all. I'm going to Alt tab, and I'm going to go back into a spreadsheet. I'm going to go to file, create a blank workbook. And now I'm going to control V paste. Whoop. Can I copy that? Whoop. That's edit, copy, alt tab, in, control V paste. And there is all of the text in other words, if you were to be in a Word document, hit the, hit the tab key. Hit the tab key. You are now setting up a Word document so that it can be moved into Excel. So we've gone over tab delimited text. We've gone over moving data in between programs. Now I wanna talk about something that gets very confusing very quickly. So let's go back into Excel and I wanna go back into my other spreadsheet. And I've got a few things down here that are already marked up. We're going to be talking about this mailing list and data sorting in a little while. Let's talk about adding and concatenating. So I have to move my, keep moving my picture all over the screen here. So. I want to add these three numbers. In order to do that, 
I need an empty cell. I'm going to start with the equal sign. I'm going to do sum. Start a parentheses. And it's given me the cell identifier. I'm going to hit plus. It's going to give me another one. I'm going to hit plus. I'm going to get the other one. I'm going to close my brackets and hit enter. Now, I want to copy this. And I want to put it, let me cut my mouse here. And I want to put it into this cell. Now I mentioned that a right mouse click is really helpful. And this is one of the places where that will be the case. Look at all of these paste options. And underneath it, it will tell you what you're going to be pasting. As a value, it will give me a number. As a formula, it's going to give me the same formula. If you look just above the letter B, you'll see the formula that it would be moving. Transpose is where you take a, a string of numbers and move them in a different direction. And that's why it's getting confused. Come on. Hit escape. Let's start over here, go back to here. Hmm. There we are. Going to copy my formula. And I'm going to. Sorry, folks. We're having difficulties here. Okay, let's move on. We'll try a different method of, add, of adding. I've highlighted three numbers. I'm going to go over to this little auto sum symbol over here. And it'll tally them up. We can also auto sum horizontally across. So two different methods of adding. Now, I'm going to take this number. I highlight my cell. I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to go back to my finicky cell here. And I am going to paste the link. And if you look up above the letter B, you'll see that what's been pulled is the cell information as well as the name of the spreadsheet that I've been working in directly above. So now we've moved through that. Let's talk about concatenating, which is a fabulously fancy word for taking information that's been split up and putting it back together. As you can see up here, we've got a formula. The secret for, oh, don't wanna do that. The secret formula for concatenating is commas and quotes. So let me walk you through this so we all understand. If I had an equal sign in front of here, I would be doing my formula. Right now I've taken the equal sign out so we can just talk about the words. 
but the structure is still the same. You've got a, a parentheses, you've got a cell being identified. After the cell, there's a comma. And then I want a space in between what's in the first cell and what's in the second cell and what's in the second cell. So hopefully that will make sense if you have any questions. Okay. So another item that we can do here, let's see if my thing will be cooperating. The cursor changes a lot in Excel, as you can see. Right now, as the plus, the thick plus sign, it will highlight an individual cell. If you go to a corner of the cell and it turns into just the bars, you can click and drag. And now it's copying all of my information as a formula going down. Control Z and we take that out. Let's do that again a little shorter so we don't get confused with Marsha, Lynn, and Vicki. Now I'm pulling numbers from, aha. So right now I've listed B14. I'm going to change that to B12. And I'm going to change it to C12. And now I've got my information from each of those three cells joined together. So we've covered our concatenating, keyboarding. This is a really wonderful thing about Excel is that if you use your arrow keys, you will be far more precise than if you try to hit a specific cell by mouse. Now, I'm going to arrow key my way up. I'm going to arrow key my way over. If I hold the shift key, I can copy, I can select additional items. Now I've got my three items selected, and I'm going to hit copy, control C, and you get your marching ants around. And we're going to go down to an empty cell, control V. And now I've taken my information from one place and it still remembers that place. To make it forget, you hit escape. Otherwise, those marching ants are going to remember A10, B10, and C10, all, all the time. So let's do that again, only this time we'll go control Z, everything goes away, our marching ants are still there. I'm going to hit escape, arrow key over to Bob, and I'm arrow key up, gonna hold my shift key, arrow key over, arrow key down. Now I've selected my block of information, Control copy. And now I can arrow key down to where I want it to be. Control V paste and the block of information will move. So that's one of the wonderful things about keyboarding in Excel. And when somebody showed that to me, it was just a, a, a wonderful change to my life very hard sometimes in a very big spreadsheet with lots of data to get just to the cell that you want. Now, two more items that you may find to be useful. See these, these little mile markers over here are always going to tell you that there's a problem of some sort. Now, the problem that Excel is telling me is a problem that I wanted to have deliberately because Excel is smarter than me and it doesn't like to start a number with zeros. It doesn't like zeros, but I need zeros for zip codes in Connecticut. So 
How do we get around that? Well, we're going to left click highlight the column, right click, go into format cells. And there's a whole slew of choices as to what you can tell a cell, a column, or a row to think of itself as. For instance, you can tell it to be currency. We'll get to date in just a minute, but you have multiple choices on dates, lots of choices on dates, lots of choices on time. The one that's very important, particularly for zip codes, is to make your cell or your column text. Because when you tell Excel that the column is text, it doesn't think of zero as a number. It thinks of it as an ASCII character letter. Well, it's a number, but it's a, an ASCII character as opposed to a mathematical number. So now we're going to put in text. And yes, it doesn't remember from beforehand, but I can do 052. Four, eight, and now it will remember anything moving forward will keep zero and it gives me that mile marker. Oh, you've, you've put a zero, it's gonna be text. Yes, I want it there. You, you always create a problem for me, Excel, and here's the workaround for zip codes. Let's talk about date for a minute because this is also uh, a blessing and a curse. If you create a document and you always want it to have today's date, the secret formula is right up here. Equal sign starts a formula, the word today, and then open close parens with nothing inside. But understand that if you've got a document where the date was important two weeks ago, but you formatted the cell to always be today's date. If you format a cell to always be today's date, tomorrow this cell is going to be 413 and the day after it's going to be 414. So be very cautious in using this formula. I have somebody that I work with where we've set up a bill where he prints out the bill with today's date. The information is already in there and it's ready to go. In that case, it works really, really well. So we've covered our formatting, sorting data, tab delimited text, moving data between programs, linking cells and sheets, workbooks. By the way, the, these. This is a spreadsheet, and each of these down here, to give the title correctly, is a workbook, which you can name with a right mouse click. And you can add them and duplicate them and put one in front of the other and let's hit escape. And if you so desire, you can take this and slide it over to here so you can change the order of things. And now we're going to talk about mailing lists where we've already talked about the header. That's very important. We've talked about the zip code where again, we've made this a text column so that we can have our zeros. You're going to see in a little while that these empty spaces will be significant. Now, as I mentioned earlier, in order for you to use a data, a collection of data to make a mailing list, it needs to be closed. It, it, when Microsoft will fight with itself if you keep the file open. Oh, and before I close this one last item, up here in the corner, move this down, is this autosave thing 
feature that is part of OneDrive. So things are saving for me as I go along. It's a very useful tool. Now we want to get into Microsoft Word, which is where you will work on your mailing list. So I'm going to close this. And I'm going to close this one as well. Well, I can keep this open. I can keep a different spreadsheet open as long as I'm not asking for the information in that spreadsheet. And now I'm going to move over to Word and we're going to go Alt Tab and get into my Word document. Clear all of this information out. Hopefully you remember that was our explanation of tab. Before we go any farther, we're also going to talk about one other thing. Type, comma, space, type, more, comma, space, type, even more. And now, every now and then you'll see something that says CSV, comma, separated values. So, you can also differentiate by comma or by tab. And uh, Excel is smart enough to understand both. I'm a bigger fan in tab because I like the split between data. Whereas with a comma, if you have a comma accidentally here, all of your data falls out of place and it becomes a major problem trying to figure out what to and how to. So we're gonna close here. I wanna make this larger so we can see it. And now we're going to go into, look at that. Microsoft was smart enough to have a tab just for mailings. So we're going to go into mailings. I'm going to move my head down to the bottom of the screen. And we're going to start a mail merge. I'm going to make labels because I make labels a lot. But you can do this for form letters. You can do this for envelopes. I'm going to do my labels. And for those of you who are familiar, Avery is the manufacturer of a large collection of, of different sizes of labels. So be sure that you pick the right product number when you go to make your label, and it will tell you the size over here. We're going to go OK, and it doesn't look like anything happened. But Word is ready to take in information. And it's going to get the information from select recipients. And we're going to use an existing list. Now, I've already pinned my information in here. If you weren't familiar with it, by the way, you can sort um, files in a folder by name. You can sort by date modified. I sort by date modified, which has my today's spreadsheet that I'm working on at the very top of the list. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to open it. And look at that. It's showing me all of my workbooks. So the one I want is the one called mailing and data sort. So also, First row of data column has headers. Very important to click that too. And now this is when things start to get a little weird. It doesn't look like anything happened and it looks like something's going to happen. So you have to tell the mailing merge what you're going to do and I'm going to put in an address block. And there's lots of choices for the address block. If I only wanted a first name, or if I want the whole name, but I want 
the title, the subject or salutation or what I, you'll see in a minute, I want the, the, the misses in there as well, but it's not showing. We're going to correct the problem by matching fields. There's a whole slew of things that have to be, it, it's like the old telephone thing that Lily Tomlin used to do where you plug in the wires. Now we got to tell the courtesy title that I called it salutation. Now, if I wanted it to remember, I would hit this box and every time I used this list of data, it would remember that. So I'm not going to because I'll probably use this again and I will forget that I did that. So now I'm going to click OK and look at that. Mrs. Pranger now has a Mrs. in front of it. And now we click OK. And now I've put the double chevrons and address block in that very first corner of my Word document. However, very important again, if you print from here, you're only going to get one label because you need to, that's right, update the label. And now that address block is going to cascade all the way through. And you can either finish by sending it to a printer or you can make a new document that will have that list if you're going to be reusing it over and over. I want all of the information, but you could go from record one to record 88 or wherever you wanted to stop. And there you are. And look in the middle here. Remember I had said before there was a problem that you didn't have an address? Well, they don't have it here either. However, this is now a Word document. So I could put in And we would add in our list. There we are. I hit return, by the way, to do that. And now you can add in your information. And then you would want to save this file. So that now covers the mailing lists. And I see a question here. How can you put three numbers in one cell that have plus and minus signs without the numbers being combined? The only way that I know of that you could do that, Philip, is if you were to make that cell text. Because if you keep it as numbers, Excel is going to get enormously confused. Let's go back to Excel and see if I'm right. We're going to go file. We'll create a new workbook. I'm going to select everything and I'm going to go up to Arial. And we'll do Arial black for fun and we'll do 28 so that it's large. Okay. So now, if you were to do 34, let's see, shift plus 22 plus 87, enter, you can have it, but it's not, I don't know what the, what the gain is. And right now it's overlapping into other cells. Next week, we're gonna talk about gussying up the spreadsheet. I don't wanna play my hand out. Double click and now my, column gets wide enough to fit. This doesn't do much for me. 
Let's try something else though. See what happens here if we go equal sum paren 34 plus 22 plus 7, 8, close paren, and now you can add the numbers, or let's do this a different way, 34. Excuse me, Budley, we're not seeing your spreadsheet. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, new share. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Ah. How about now? We see it. Great. Okay. So let me go backwards because we have a few moments. So I started here with numbers and plus signs. Doesn't accomplish well. It everybody uses spreadsheets differently. It may accomplish what you want, then again, it may not. If you take these numbers and you add in that equal sign and sum and parens, now hit enter. Now you can add those numbers together. Now I'm going to put in my 22 and I'm going to put in my 78. And now I'm going to go equal sum, start my open paren, and now I'm going to hit my plus sign. I'm going to hit my second, hit my plus sign, going to hit my third, close, hit enter, and we've gotten here by adding numbers, we've gotten here by adding cells. So we're doing pretty good. Um, that's what I wanted to talk about. As you know, next week there's more to go and we will cover all of the items on the list. Uh, as you can see, it's very easy in Excel to stump the professor. You are welcome to continue to do so. Can I answer any questions for anyone? Hey, Bobby, I have one, and I may be skipping ahead to next week, but I know you're very big on, on security. Um, uh, in Excel, I think you can uh, protect the cells on a workbook. Um, you can protect the, um, the whole spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I'm going to, I'm going to, delay that until next week to be sure I give you the right answer. It wasn't an item. I know you can hide columns and I want to, I, I will do those for next week for you, Mike. Let me make a note. Okay, very good. If anybody uh, has a question, please put it in the chat box and I'll be happy to answer them. All right, we will do those for next week, I promise. All right. Thanks for listening, folks. Glad you could join us. Okay. Mike, well, I'm thank going to thank kick you back over to our spreadsheet, uh, our PowerPoint, in case anyone has any additional questions, either for SCORE or myself, contact information is there. And we'll give you your, your recap or wrap up screen. Uh, we're not seeing it yet, buddy. Oh. We're still seeing your spreadsheet. Really? Well, that's interesting. New share. How about now? I got it now, that's great. Uh, okay. okay, well, uh, thank you very much, Buddy, for uh, presenting. I look forward to next week's uh, session two on Excel. Uh, just as a reminder, a recording of this webinar and the materials are available within a couple of days 
on fairfieldcounty.score.org. Um, as I mentioned a moment ago, uh, part two of this uh, subject matter, Excel, which is also part three in our five part series will be next Monday night, that's April 19th at 6 p.m. Uh, please register for that webinar at either fairfieldcounty.score.org or at darienlibrary.org. Again, SCORE offers free individual business counseling, so please use the link on the screen or visit our website and click Request a Mentor. Uh, also, please fill out your evaluations that have been sent to you at the end of this webinar. They really help us in developing more programs which people and, uh, would like to see. Uh, so on behalf of SCORE, I'd like to again thank Susan Skitter and the Darien Library for partnering with us on this webinar series. Uh, Budley, thank you very much for presenting again tonight, and thank you all for attending tonight's webinar. Have a nice evening, and stay healthy, everyone. Thanks for joining us, folks.